I'm Claire Temple and I'm the Head of Languages at a school called of in Wrexham. It's a 11 to 16 comprehensive, very mixed catchment, so a huge range of different expectations from our pupils and different levels of literacy and, and um, different aspirations as well. We started our Triple Literacy Project um, after the, well, just over a year ago, after the conference in Cardiff about raising literacy skills. And we were looking, we sort of looked at what had gone on with the pilot projects and thought we really needed to try and do more to build up more links across the different languages in school. Um, the whole point from, from all the pilot projects have been to try and emphasise the idea of working together. Uh, that's not the case because in English you work with text or in, in what we find in our schools English was working mainly with texts our French curriculum is very much based around skills and structures and our Welsh department uses a words based communicative approach and added into all of that um, literacy has been a, a whole school focus for a couple of years now and particularly now we're looking at comprehension skills that's been identified as an, an area of priority for the school for this year. <coughs> we started off <coughs> looking at the, um, from the pilot projects, looking at the reading logs that other pilot projects had done in um, schools in South Wales. And so we started off quite simply saying, well, we're not doing any reading with our, our French classes other than what's in the textbook. Um, and similarly for Welsh, whereas the English classes are getting a, a regular library lesson. And we felt that that was a valuable period of time that the pupils were missing out on because it, we weren't actually encouraging them to develop any sort of independent um, learning and independent sort of sense of confidence in their own um, ability to deal with language. So we started off with some reading logs which were quite simple A4 sheets of paper where we simply asked um, key stage three classes to look for words in a text that they were reading and just to find words that they like the sound of, identify what they were, what they meant, use the dictionaries to find out um, parts of speech and so on as well, and just gradually sort of try and make links across the languages and fill in a vocabulary sheet. Um, we had several problems with this because we were finding that it was quite difficult to manage logistically. We didn't dare give pupils things to take home because we knew they wouldn't come back into school again. Um, we weren't managing to actually <clears throat> make the links across between the departments to keep circulating the sheets and making sure that we were actually cross-checking each other. But what we were finding was that the pupils really enjoyed working on the sheets and finding new words. It also prompted us in the French department to look at what resources we had and to think about buying in some reading materials which we now use as sort of time filler extension activities. Um, so anyone who's finished some work early on wants a bit of a reward and will go and get a, a reading card out and, and they really enjoy doing that. And they enjoyed as well being given the freedom to find their own words and to think about what words they wanted to use. We also wanted to try and actually raise the profile of language around the school. So we started working on some our own version of the triple literacy posters and we gave this to our year, nine our year 9 classes in the summer term. So after they've done their options, um, language is, is perhaps not very high in the priority for some of them. So we said, well, with, the, language, with the, the French classes, they were going to use the time to do some research about how words work in different languages. And the pupils worked in groups. They decided what content they wanted to put into the posters themselves. And then we set it up as a, a Moodle course where they had links to online dictionaries and they were looking for the words they'd identified as being important words in English in different subject areas. Um, and then they were <coughs> importing those words in French and Welsh and also Polish and Portuguese because we've got a very high proportion of Polish and Portuguese children in our school. So we were hoping that this was then going to help um, with some of the EAL issues that we have around school as well. So that's an, ex <coughs> an example of part of one of the science posters that the pupils had come up with. We do need to tweak them a bit, we need to get our proofreading um, sorted out a bit more efficiently, mm -hmm. but the idea is that the pupils put this onto Moodle, um, we then take this back to the subject specialists 
and say to them, are these words sensible words for, the, for these pupils to be included, in the, the, to raise the profile of these words. We then print off a poster, a couple of examples here, they still need checking back. <coughs> couple of mistakes in them still, but their, their work's in progress. And the idea is then that these posters will be given to the departments for them to display in their department areas so that um, EAL students can actually be making the links between their own language and English in particular, but also then be looking at words in a specific context, at subject-specific words. Um, and hopefully they'll start realising as well that words can have either a subject-specific context or a general context. Um, so that, that's the sort of the summary of the, the aims for the, the keywords posters. The whole point was that the pupils had to be identifying what words they felt they needed to be using. Um, and, and then it's sort of moderated by, by teachers afterwards. We also wanted to then look more, more carefully at how we do build up their independent reading. The English department have these regular <coughs> library lessons for independent reading, but they have six lessons a fortnight. We only get three, so we can't really build those in as regularly as we'd like to in, in Welsh or French. So we've set ourselves the target of building in one <coughs> library <coughs> lesson per half term in both French and in Welsh, where we're actually providing them with some resources um, to, to be able to develop their independent reading. And the idea is that they'll um, read some authentic articles which are linked to the schemes of work and which will support, but not necessarily direct, the things they're doing in the lessons. So we discussed with each other what, what topics we were doing in our schemes of work. And we said, well, we'll each of us will find a short article that will link to each of those topics and we've got one topic set up per half term, plus a spare one in case we actually find that we've got ahead of ourselves and, and need an extra one to run into. And then we identified which departments would actually lead each topic area because we wanted to make sure that we didn't fall into the same trap again of not actually rotating the reading logs around. So we've developed these reading booklets. I've got some samples if anyone wants to have a look later. And the idea is that the reading booklets will be held by the class teacher for the language that's leading that topic at that particular point in the term. And once they've had their library lesson and they've done all their activities and so on and they've finished with the booklet, those booklets can get collected back in again and then passed on to the next um, teacher who's going to be leading the next topic. So that the, the class teachers can then just build that into their lesson planning um, to, to, to fit in with the topic as and when they're ready for it. <laughs> Uh, it means that the booklets stay in school, we don't lose them. The, the kids don't take them home and then sort of uh, forget that they've got them. And it means that we're actually, as we rotate the booklets around the school, we get a chance to check up on the languages, the language content that's going in, <coughs> and the other languages that, that we can't cover, that, that, that our colleagues can't cover. So the Welsh teachers can have a quick look back at what they've done in French and, and so on. And as, at the same time as them doing that, their activities in the booklets but we're also giving them an exercise book, which is quite simply a double page spread on the left hand side of that uh, left hand page. Uh, they make whatever notes they like about English words or in English. And then the right hand page is divided into columns uh, for French and for Welsh. And then for any other language that they want, so it might be that they speak Portuguese or Polish or another language, or that they're beginning to learn another language outside of school. So they can actually start building up a vocabulary. So effectively, they're building up their own dictionaries. And these dictionaries will stay with the reading log, the reading booklets. Um, and hopefully, by the end of the key stage, they will have a set of reading books and, a set, and their own personalized dictionary that they can keep with them and they can carry them on into um, key stage four. <coughs> So this is um, an example of the, the pages in the reading book. What we've done is um, we've got a double page spread, two double page spreads per, per topic area. So we've got English, Welsh and French and then each section also has a responses page so that the pupils can actually think and reflect on what they've been reading. <coughs> 
the articles that we chose, we made a conscious decision not to try and actually have parallel texts because we're, this is designed for year seven at the moment and we were finding that to get the level of language that was accessible in year seven for French, if we had the same sort of text in, for example, in English, um, then they, they, it would just be very simplistic for them. Whereas um, if, we, if we tried to then have different um, topic, different, different texts, they could actually be making the links across <coughs> the different languages, looking for common words and using it to try and build up their understanding. So this is the one on food. We've got a poem in English, a poem in Welsh, and we've got a recipe in French, and we've put activities in to try and help them with their French understanding. And then they've got the responses page as well. We've used Moodle, we're putting this onto Moodle so that they can access these books from home as well if they want to. Um, and hopefully that will eventually help to reduce <coughs> printing costs and help us to monitor how they use it better. Uh, we've, we're looking at doing questionnaires with them to, to look at their confidence in reading because what we want to do is to get them used to the idea that it's okay not to understand every word. That you, you're, you're actually sort of developing the, the, the idea of, of reading for pleasure and taking the fear out of reading. And we're going to use the separate reading tests, the results before and after, um, at the beginning, the end, end of the year. We found time difficult, finding time to get meetings and to actually sort this out. This has taken quite a lot of time to put together, but now that it's done, we've got it forever, um, and we can actually review the articles and put things in if we need to. There's been a bit of um, tension at times. We set up a PLC to do this. The expectations in school of what a PLC was, compared to the expectations of what we felt we needed to do within the remit of the grant, um, needed resolving sometimes. And we've had to sort of re-educate the school a bit about what an, a PLC could be doing, uh, which has been interesting. But we've, we've managed that. But the plus thing has been um, the ex external support. So we're very grateful. We've had a lot of support from the local authority advisors and from the silk company advisors. Obviously, the grant we couldn't have done pre prepared these without having some extra resources to do it. Mm -hmm. Having the case studies got us started. Um, but the biggest bonus, really, from all of it is that as departments, we're working better together. We understand how we're working as departments and how we can support each other and how our approaches can actually overlap and support the pupils' learning. Thank you.